is Dwight Mtonono. I'm doing session two of the leadership development process that we learn from Joseph as a, as a man and an example of how God processes us. Uh, last time we talked about the chaos in Joseph's family and how it was that he was born into an environment which he had no control over. And in that environment, he found himself hated. This hatred was not be just because of what he did, but it was because he was born to a mother who was the favorite wife. And he became number 11 out of 12. So by the time he came in, there were four wives, there were 10 sons, and there was an animosity towards him, which he did not fully understand. And then he begins to get these dreams. And in these dreams, he sees himself as a great leader, and he sees himself above his brothers. Now, we then move into the second portion where we look at the slavery and prison life that Joseph had to go through, the slavery and prison. In Genesis chapter 37, verse 28, it says, Then Midianite traders passed by, and they drew Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver. They took Joseph to Egypt. I'll read another portion, Genesis chapter 39 and verse 20. It says there, And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined, and he was there in prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him steadfast love. And then we move on and we go to Genesis chapter 40, from verse 14 through to 15. And it says there, only remember me when it is well with you, and please do me the kindness to mention me to Pharaoh, and so get me out of this house. For I was indeed stolen out of the land of the Hebrews, and here also I have done nothing that they should put me into the pit. These three portions of scripture show us uh, some of what Joseph went through. This was a confusing time for Joseph. This was a time where he was sold into slavery. And there were some very, uh, th these two days, two days in Joseph's life, two turning points, two traumatic events that happened, changed his life forever. Day number one was, when the, was on the day he went out to look for his brothers and he found himself a slave by the end of the day. Day number two was when Mrs. Potiphar came to him and she wanted to sleep with him and he decided or, or he resolved not to do that, not to sin before God and he found himself in prison. This was a confusing time for Joseph. You see, we will read later that he was 30 when he, became, when he was exalted and he came into Pharaoh's service. That means that from the time that he was 17 until the time he was 30, he was a slave and a prisoner. It is a 14 year period, if you count inclusively, from the time that he was 17 until the time he was 30. A time of confusion, a time of aggrievement. We hear his cry for justice, where he's talking about how he was, in, he was sold and how he was in prison and he had done nothing to deserve that. We almost see Joseph as a civil right uh, movement person, a person who wants justice, a person who's crying out and saying, this was done to me, this, was, this wrong was, done to, uh, uh, was perpetrated towards me. We see uh, a, an aggrievement, a cry for justice, perhaps even a bitterness at the, uh, at the events that he had gone through. This was a confusing time for Joseph. And when he asked, to, or, or when he asked that cup bearer to, to, to speak to Pharaoh, the only thing he wanted was to be released from that prison. The only thing that Joseph sought was that that bitterness and that pain that he was going through would somehow be resolved. In the midst of your confusion, my friend, you need to understand God is in control. 
You might not understand it all, but even if, even as Joseph went through this, God was in control. God is in control. You might not understand it all. He is in control.